Hello and welcome to SNES Classics. In this installment, the game is Mega Man 7. Mega Man 7 was quietly released for the Super Nintendo in 1995. It was um, subsequently the sequel to the 1993 NES and Famicom game Mega Man 6. Mega Man 6 was overshadowed by Mega Man X, which was released for the Super Nintendo also the same year, 1993. Um, much to the same fate, Mega Man 7 was swept aside um, when Mega Man X2 was released, also for the Super Nintendo. Mega Man X2 was more advanced in terms of gameplay, and also had the CX4 chip, which allowed it to do um, some wireframe 3D effects. But um, Mega Man 7 was the first time that Capcom allowed um, two series to run side by side, the Mega Man Classic series with Mega Man 7, and the Mega Man X series with Mega Man X2. This would be um, the SNES's only uh, Mega Man Classic game, aside from the crazy Mega Man Soccer game spin-off. Um, but this is a direct sequel to Mega Man 6, which is pretty damn cool, because, you know, the way that Mega Man 6 ends, it's like you think it's just the end of the series, that they're not going to make another Mega Man Classic game. So I was really quite surprised when I was a kid that this game came out. Especially, um, you know, considering that the Mega Man X games were, you know, live and thriving and Mega Man X 2 came out the same damn year. So anyway, um, because of its, uh, because of it being overshadowed by Mega Man X 2, Mega Man 7 is actually one of the rarest um, g general action platformers you can find for the Super Nintendo. The prices for this game have absolutely soared in recent years, and uh, I feel really lucky to own a copy. Alright, so here's Mega Man 7. Taking a cue from Mega Man X1, um, Mega Man 7 was the first um, Mega Man Classic game to have an intro stage. For those who have played this game, one of the annoyances is that the intro stage um, cannot be skipped. This is all scripted events that you can't even skip with a start button. When I can actually do something is right here. In heavy contrast with the NES games, um, Mega Man 7 has overly huge sprites. If you compare this to like games um, like Mega Man 3 for the NES, 
Um, these sprites are about twice the size, if not three times the size of, the, of their NES counterparts. The sprites are so huge, in fact, that it sort of makes the game its own thing. No other Mega Man game would go with sprites anywhere near this size. Mega Man 8 and um, Mega Man uh, and Mega Man and Base um, both use larger sprites, but not nearly to this scale. There goes Base. Like the Game Boy games, um, Mega Man 7 allows you to only choose between four Robot Masters at a time. Um, you fight for the first four, and then when they're defeated, you do like a mid-boss, and then you fight um, the other four. This was um, exactly the style as was depicted in the Game Boy games, the Mega Man um, Rockman World series, um, especially the fourth, uh, our third, fourth, and fifth games. Alright, so we'll choose a Robot Master here. Uh, let's do, um, I don't know, Cloud Man. Makes it clear. There it is. Right out of Airman stage, Mega Man 2. Out of right out of Mega Man 2. Well, you guys get the point. Um, Mega Man 7 is a pretty awesome game that's very worth tracking down. Um, 
It is expensive, but it is also on the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, so maybe pick that version up. So thanks for watching, see you next time.